So, welcome ladies and gentlemen. Today we are talking about families of graphs. Uh, this technically is not part of our introduction to calculus, but it's uh, somewhat of a prerequisite skill that we're going to be using uh, when talking about some calculus concepts. Uh, and talking about families of graphs, uh, the first thing we're going to consider are parent functions. All right, families, parents, right? So parent functions... are kind of our basic starting unmodified uh, functions. So I'm going to have, I think, maybe six different parent functions that we'll look at. But those are not the only ones. <coughs> so I'm going to have some coordinate planes here. A whole air force of coordinate planes, am I right? <laughs> Classic. So let's see, our first parent function is a linear function, uh, y equals x. All right, so that's our linear function. Uh, it's also referred to as the identity function um, because it's the line of which when you write mirror something over itself, you'll get its inverse. And if this is the only graph that is the inverse of itself, so that's why it's... Do I need identity. to uh, put in the identity graph? Yeah, we'll just draw in the pictures and writing the equations okay. for now. Let's see another type of... Uh, then we have polynomial functions like y equals x squared. So that was uh, would have a vertex at the origin, up 1 over 1, up 3 over 1, up 5 over 1, right? So it's a parabola that's getting steeper Wait, and steeper. Wait, when did it start... Wait, what did... I don't think it starts at yeah. 0. It starts at 1. No, for y equals x squared, it does. Unless I had no. plus 1. Oh, yeah, because zero. 0 squared is 0. Yeah, I was thinking of 0 as the exponent. You got it. And then uh, a cubic function looks something like this. Right, and we technically had other polynomials as well, 4th degree, 5th degree, blah, blah, blah. Although those... Uh, no, well, I guess you can still have parent functions of those, but we ended up doing some fancier modifications to those as well. And then absolute value equation. Do you guys know what an absolute value graph looks like? I think my PSA or practice SAT review prep. Have two lines. No, it's a V shape. Uh, and the reason that is true is because the absolute value of X, so X itself looks like this graph, right? And is a line. Absolute value would make all of these values positive. So this negative portion of this line would suddenly become positive, and it gives you a V. Right? So it looks like that, which is kind of nice. Absolute value V. Hmm. Right? You'll remember that. Uh, let's see. This next one you have never seen before. Not that I know of. Uh, it's the. It's got these weird double barred square brackets. Let's see. I'm not even good at drawing these yet. Let me see if I can do this. Uh, double bar square brackets. Uh, that bottom part's too long there. All right. Uh, yeah, these are hard to <coughs> draw. Yeah, I just don't have a lot of practice drawing those. Um, but this is called the greatest integer function. I guess I'll give that a name. So greatest integer function. Uh, and I think these have actually shown up on maybe even kneecaps or something, maybe. I don't remember. Uh, but the greatest integer function is kind of a round down function, I guess is what I'd say. So for numbers between 0 and up to 1, but not including it, it would round down to 0 for all of those. So it would be... Uh, look like this, and then it'd have an open circle. And then for values from 1 to 2, it would round up to, or down to 1. Hang on. And then from 2 to 3, it would round down to 2. And it ends up being like this little step function, all right, where I have open circles here because when I'm at 2 exactly, it bumped up to 2. It didn't equal 2, right? And then for values between negative 1 and 0, what would that round down to? Negative 1. Negative 1, yeah. 
So I'd be open circle to the right on the right and closed circle on the left. And yeah, so it ends up looking like this weird little function. It's also can be called a piecewise function, uh, technically. It's like a platform. Yeah, yeah, like if you were playing Mario, like you'd run up that, jump off the top, and land on a flagpole, maybe. I could see you doing that. Um, yeah. But uh, greatest integer functions, I, I think sometimes those have been used to model stuff like postage costs, where it's like a flat rate for packages weighing between these, these values, and then suddenly it jumps up to another rate for a weight of this range and different things like that. Um, and actually the whole idea of a piecewise function is a function that can be made up of multiple graphs, uh, which I guess I haven't talked about before either, but we'll figure that out later. Uh, and then there's a rational function, y equals 1 over x. I could also call that x to the negative 1. Does anyone remember what that one looks like? That one's actually asymptotic uh, on the x and y axes. It looks like this. Alright, so these are um, some parent functions, not all of them. Technically you could, you know, have all sorts of weird parent functions, even though this one clearly is pretty weird. Uh, I might actually, yeah, I might just do a, a brief sidestep just to talk a little bit more about piecewise functions, uh, because we will be doing some work with them. Uh, a little bit later um, regarding continuity tests and such. Um, let's see, I'm going to scroll down here. Uh, so this is a, a piecewise function. Let's see if I, do I even know how to spell piecewise? P-I-E-C-E W-I-S-E function. Uh, piecewise functions just look like this, where they're basically composed of multiple parts and have restricted domains on those parts. Uh, so for instance, I could have um, y is equal to this following set, and I could have it be x squared, um, I think it does the straight bar, for x less than uh, 0, and I could have it equal uh, x, or negative x even, how about for x greater than or equal to 0. And that means to the left of 0, I would have uh, a parabola. And to the right of 0, I would have just a regular line. And those happen to line up in this case, but they don't always have to have a junction where they connect. Uh, right? So in this case, these don't connect. There's disjoint uh, issues right there where they're not connected. But yeah, piecewise function, and actually you can have as many pieces as you want. So you could have like five pieces that are all like, you know, you could have a sine wave for one piece and then like absolute value and then a parabola and then you could have the greatest integer function for a little bit. Uh, How do you spell piecewise? Um, P-I-E-C-E -E. What's up? Uh, what line? This one? Well, this is like my restricted domain. It, it would have been an open circle here, is what it would have been. And then, because x was greater or equal to 0, it was equal to this, this ended up filling in the circle. So the filled in part is technically part of this graph and not part of that graph. Um, but yeah, so you end up having some interesting behaviors there. Uh, that's just a side note, though. All right. So <clears throat> we're going to be talking about uh, modifying these parent functions, right, where you can have child functions that have uh, traits of the parent function, the general features of it, but maybe have been shifted or stretched or upside down it did. Maybe. Upside down. I th I I don't know, flipped maybe is the other word I could have used for that. Um, and that's kind of what we've got going on. So actually I think what I might do is uh, have us look at some graphs on Sketchpad here. 
Let's see. I found a couple things that I thought were interesting. Mm, did I like my own? I think I might like my own. Oh dear, don't bog down on me now. Oh dear, 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 dear. Um, here, check this out. Uh, I forget that. That never works. Um, so what I've got here, uh, this dotted graph is the parent function of the absolute value graph. Uh, something like that. And then I've got this new function uh, where I'm multiplying the inside of x by 3 and then taking the absolute value. And it ends up giving me, uh, well, you could argue that's a vertical stretch, but later on we'll see that that's technically a horizontal smoosh by a third. But um, let me simplify this, first of all. Uh, so, um, so if, if the function remains unchanged, the child is the same as the parent, right? g of x is just equal to f of x. If I add 1 to the outside of the function, all right, notice that results in a vertical shift, right? Which you would have suspected, right? Um, so this g of x I also could have written as absolute value of x, close absolute value, plus 1, right? And then I could also subtract 4 from it, and then bam, vertical shift down. All right, so if I'm doing something on the outside of the function, adding or subtracting, it's re resulting in some sort of vertical translation, all right, by that value, right? And we saw this with uh, h comma k in the case of parabolas and circles and stuff like that, kind of, right? Uh, now, what if I do a plus 2 on the inside of the parentheses, what do you think that's going to do? So that means I'm adding 2 to x before I take the absolute value. It's going to make the thing skinnier. It's going the horizontal. Child, the it's actually, well, I'm, I'm adding to it, not multiplying or dividing. I think it's going to horizontal. It's going to shift it. Which way do you think it will shift it? I'd like to say to the right, but it's probably going to be to the left. Yeah. I mean, plus 2, you'd think, let's move in the positive x direction. However, uh, you're right to be suspicious. Recall that, like, when I did parabolas before, we had, like, x minus h parentheses squared and then plus k. So anytime you do something on the inside of the function for adding or subtracting, it actually moves it in the opposite direction that you might first suspect. So notice that this is actually a shift to the left by 2 when I'm adding 2 on the inside of the absolute value, right? So that's the same as uh, x plus 2 absolute value all around it is what's happening there, all right? So, um, so it's kind of the opposite of what you would think. Uh, but, uh, well, I guess think about this. Um, this vertex, quote unquote, occurred at the origin, all right? Or when x equals 0, when would the inside of the absolute value equal 0 in this case? When x is negative 2. All right, so it, it results in shifting it kind of in the opposite direction that you'd expect. Um, and then you can do combinations of those. So what if I have x plus 2 in the absolute value and then minus 1? That will shift left 2 down 1. And right, and you see that that's exactly what happened. Okay. So as far as those translations, those happen to work exactly as you'd think. And watch this. What if I change my, my parent function from absolute value of x to x squared? Notice it does exactly the same shift, left 2, down 1. Or I could make it, uh, I think there was a way I was able to simulate, uh, what was it? Uh, this didn't have exactly uh, the greatest integer function but I'm able to simulate it here. Oh, wow, that's really weird looking. So the dotted line simulates the greatest integer function. All right, I end up having to use this round function on this. Um, let me make this normal here. Uh, so shifting it down one, it shifted this platform down, this platform down, this platform down, All right? This one happens to be weird because the way it lines up. Uh, actually, maybe that's an interesting question. So g of x is equal to f of x minus 1. 
what's another way I could get exactly the same graph but without doing a vertical shift? On the inside, do minus one or plus one? Minus one. Minus one. We'll shift it in the positive direction. And I think you can't tell, but it did in fact map over itself. So yeah, I just want to point out that sometimes there's multiple ways. Oh, those are like really light colored and thin. Uh, sometimes there are multiple ways of accomplishing the same result by kind of like viewing it differently. That one's just a little bit bizarre in this case. Um, so, so the shifting, uh, right, is all, I think it kind of makes sense. We've seen most of those things before, right? Vertical shifts, adding and subtracting on the outside. Horizontal shifts, adding and subtracting on the inside. Now, if I multiply the outside by something, so for instance, if I do two times my parent function, what do you think is going to happen? Well, only in horizontal world sometimes. Is this going to affect this vertically or horizontally? Diagonally. Diagonally. Uh, well, vertically, think about it this way. If it happens to the x, it's affecting the horizontal features of the graph. If it's happening outside the function, it's changing the y value of the function. All right? So two times this, this is going to be a vertical stretch by two. And notice now this one is twice as high, this one is twice as high, this one is twice as high. All right, so I end up getting a steeper, in this case, right, uh, child function. Um, let me change this to something that maybe we're more familiar with, right? So if I made the parent function a parabola, notice that this is now twice as steep or it grows twice as fast is maybe the way I could say it, right? So instead of, uh, let's see, oh, here we are. All right, I was messed up because these are counting by halves, not by ones. So here's the point one, one, roughly, right where my arrow is. And now it's at the point uh, one comma two, right? So it doubled. Or the point uh, two comma four is now going to be at two comma eight all the way up there is what happened, all right? And what happens if I multiply by, like, 0 0.5 on the outside? Yeah. Wider. Wider, It'll or vertically really speaking? Smushed. It'll be vertically smooshed. Vertically smooshed, right? So now it's half as high as it used to be, okay? So in the case of vertical multiplication, or division, depending on how you think about it, uh, it is in the direction that you think it would, right? So if it's a number bigger than one that I'm multiplying by, it's going to stretch it. And if it's a number less than one, it's going to smoosh it. Okay? So, let's see what happens if I change the x before I square it. So what do you think uh, 2x parentheses squared is going to look like? So I'm doubling the rate at which I cycle through my x's. So maybe. So x's are happening twice as fast. So that means what's this going to look like? It's changing horizontally, but is it going to stretch it or smoosh it? All right. So this is actually a horizontal smoosh. So the point one one right here is now the point point five one, because point five times two is one, and I'm getting the same y value twice as quickly. All right, um, so that's a little bit weird. And if I multiplied the inside by three, now it's happening three times as fast. All right, or I could view it as a horizontal smoosh. All right, where it's basically one third the the width maybe is how I could say it, right, something like that. So pretty much anything you do inside the parentheses is opposite of what you... Yeah, a little bit of what you'd... Yeah, opposite of what you'd suspect. Um, so what do you think would happen if I multiply by 0.5 on the inside? Right, and that is in fact what happens. 
Let's see, do you, uh, well, let me, let me try the 2x. All right, so here's the horizontal smoosh. Could someone give me a function, all right, uh, that is not horizontal, but that is vertically accomplishing something similar? Five times? No. Oh, okay. Two times on the outside? Let's see what happens. Not quite. Yeah, I think four times. And in this case, yeah, it lines up. The reason that's true, if I think of 2x parentheses all squared and I distribute the square, that's 4x squared, all right, which is uh, what this is representing, right? So... Um, so yeah, kind of interesting stuff there. Uh, and let's, let's actually just verify, let's see, what's a good parent function we could work with? Let's look at the cubic one. All right, so uh, this one's a, maybe a little bit harder to see. But the 2x, that's smooshing it horizontally by a factor of 2, or it's half as wide. I don't know how you want to verbalize that. And then let's see if I... Uh, multiply the outside by 3, let's say. It's now actually steeper by a factor of 3. All right. So kind of interesting results. And then I can combine those with like a plus 1 on the outside and a minus 2 on the inside. And now I can shift that as well. Um, and that's what I end up getting. So intriguing results. All right, so... Horizontal shifts, horizontal smooshes, horizontal stretches, right? All sorts of stuff. Um, what about... All right, so here's my original function. What do you think is going to happen if I, multi or I multiply by negative 1 on the outside? Which way? Okay, over the x-axis, yeah. Right, because negative 1 times f of x, f of x is just another way to say y, so my y values are now the opposite of what they were, and bloop, now it's flipped. Okay? Oh my god. All right, so multiplying by a negative on the outside flips it over the x-axis, or is a vertical... What? So it grows twice as fast and is flipped. All right, right. So that's but you see now like the general behaviors that are taking place here, and let's let's change the parent function. I just want to point out that this is true for all. Oh, that's a little too many parentheses, right? Look at that right there. That's like almost reminds me of like butterflies' wings. I imagine it also looks kind of like a really scary looking clown. Yeah, or I imagine that those would be lines that you could draw strong bads mass with. Who's what? Strong bad? He's a he's a dude from Homestar Runner. Looks kind of like Garfield when he's really annoyed. Oh, Garfield when he's annoyed. Yeah, especially with the orange. Wow, this this is great. Right, but I want to point out, notice it, it doubled the rate at which it grows and then flipped it upside down, which I think is the same, actually. I could have flipped it upside down and then doubled the rate that it grows. It works both ways. That's, that's equally the same. Um, and then I think, really scary, we could actually have variations. Okay. Could you, could you try to verbalize what's taking place here? There's three things that take X place. X has been, well, in short, I can say that X is, that the orange graph is now six times as steep and it's negative. I don't know if that's actually six times as steep. I would say it's been smooshed by a factor of three horizontally, right? It's been flipped. And it's, it's vertically stretched by a factor of two. So smooshed by a factor of three, or it's one-third as wide, stretched by a factor of two, 
flipped upside down. All right, so all, all sorts of stuff is happening to that. All right, and now actually one of the things I want to, that can be intriguing, um, is stuff like this, trying to figure out what takes, what is the first thing that takes priority. Um, yeah, and I think we'd have to kind of think of it in terms of PEMDAS. Uh, so for instance, this, before I hit equals, um, I think horizontally it's being shifted technically. Well, I guess it didn't really matter in that case. But there's some that you might have to kind of like figure out like which would take precedence. Um, yeah. Yeah. But some, some of it you'll just have to be a little bit aware of, like, does the order of the transformations actually take place? And I think after we look at uh, tonight's homework, we might, I don't know, maybe tomorrow we'll have more conversation to have regarding that concept. Um, and let's see. And then how about one more thing? This one. What if I multiply the inside by negative 1? What do you think that's going to do? It's horizontal because it's affecting the x and not the y. So you're flipping it horizontally? Yes, I'm flipping it horizontally or over which axis? The y. The y axis. Now, but remember with horizontal, it flipped it over the y axis in the opposite direction you first thought about. I guess that doesn't matter. <laughs> Unless you're thinking in three dimensions and like I mean, you were going to rotate it clockwise or counterclockwise. If the carriage was like x to the third instead of the absolute, yeah. Right, do something. Yeah, let's different. look at x to the third. That might be a more interesting one. And that actually, in that case, because of the uh, symmetry of that graph, that looks like it's the same as a vertical reflection. It like looks like, the yeah, head. you know, it looks like Garfield's annoyed again. A little bit. Let's do, uh, let's do... Okay, this one now it's clear. That is not a vertical flip, right? That is a horizontal flip. So you can see that this line over here is now over here. This line over here is now over here, right? So definitely a horizontal flip. And would it have been the same either way? Or would it have? Let's, let's see. Uh, let's graph. Oop. Ah, me. Ooh. Ah, I forget what I'm doing. All right, let me see. Round x minus 0 0.5. I think that's how I simulate that. Um, and let me graph a new one, which will be this. Uh, and multiplying by negative 1 on the outside, right? Close. Close. All right. So a vertical flip, this line is now up here. Yeah. So actually, we could have simulated it with a vertical flip and, and a on the inside or outside. Minus one. Uh, yep. Wow, that's not the way I thought about it. I was going to do a plus one on the inside, which would have shifted it horizontally over to the left one. But yeah, anyways, interesting stuff, right? Yeah, you know, I interesting can't stuff. Imagining like a stick figure jumping on those. Yeah. That's like a platform. Yeah, that. that Perfect platforming math right there. Um, so let's see. So I think I've summarized all of these different things. Uh, your book does have some other uh, results going on there. Actually, oh, let's do an interesting one. What if, what if my parent function is x squared? All right, so there's my classic parent. Uh, notice a horizontal flip doesn't do much there either. Uh, and what if... I subtract 1, all right? Well, actually, I meant to do it on the outside. Actually, let's subtract 4. Now, question, what happens if I make a new function that is the absolute value of this function g? I know my SAT prep people might know this one. It's going to take the at 0 cutoff and going to Okay. Make a weird mountain on the inside. Right, so all of these negative values are suddenly going to be flipped right side up. 
And I end up getting, uh, that's actually, in order to show this better, I'm going to show it all in just the orange you know, here. The orange and the purple dotted lines look kind of like the head of a 747 jet. Yeah, that's weird. Right? So all of the negative components have suddenly been made positive. Right. Oh my gosh. So isn't that kind of weird? Actually, uh, just to be really crazy, what if I have an x to the fourth minus 3x uh, squared plus 2x minus 6? I don't even know what that graph looks like. Oh my. So. Uh, let me see if I can. All right. Uh, let me shift it, shift it. Oh my god. Maybe if I do plus 1. Yeah, I don't even know what the graph looks like, but we'll go nuts the It would have been a W graph, is the way those are. Like, you can see the dotted one. A fourth degree polynomial has as many as three bends, blah, 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 stuff like that. Yeah. Look at that, yeah. The orange ones just got, like, all sorts of weird, weird stuff going on to it. But uh, this one's not a very good parent function. It's a bad parent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, using its child all day. Yeah, look at this terribly abused child. Oh, <laughs> oh man. What about the tiny little mountain? Yeah, uh, this is messed up for a number of other reasons. Um, actually, let me just. There we go. That one's more like uh, what you would have perhaps expected. Let me see if I can uh, subtract. Uh, 4.2. Nope, that's not what I meant. Let's see, I want to get it to line up the way that I first thought. Uh, nope. That's kind of intriguing. Let me do plus 0 0.2. No, I keep doing it in the wrong direction. Minus 0 0.2. That graph is getting abused. There we go. Look at that. Right, so the positive sections stay positive, and the negative sections are now positive. All sorts of crazy stuff. Really weird. But I want you to just, with this lesson, think about graphs in much more general perspectives, all right, where you're thinking of what would the parent of this graph look like, and what sort of translations or shifts or flips would have resulted in this new graph. And that ends up giving you some insight uh, when you're graphing something that's entirely new, you might have some initial perspectives of like, oh wait, I know what absolute value graphs look like, or I know what parabolas look like. This one's just skinny and flipped upside down, right? And then you can more quickly, you know, analyze what your results are going to be. I like that one a lot. Yeah, that child graph has been horrifically abused. It's almost like if you had a variable gravity planet and you were bouncing a ball, and then like, it kept changing the gravity, so each height was suddenly like modified, and then it suddenly went to zero gravity at the end and went back out into space. That's what that would be. Well, anyways, all right, goodbye, Internet. I'm going to answer.